Hello, this is Solar PV TV from SNEC 2016. Now we are in our private discussion for Solar Pioneers series uh, with uh, Sean Chu, one of the icons of the solar industry. But Sean, this time I would like to that you relax. We don't speak too much about business, we just uh, speak more about your private life, about your dreams, also about your history. So, I'm never being as relaxed as today. <laughs> Okay, that's awesome. So forget about uh, all the businesses you had because the show is so busy. Let's focus uh, first on your childhood. When we are children, yeah. very often we dream about becoming fireman, mm. policeman, or I don't know, maybe doctor. And what was your dream? Oh, that's very interesting. Very interesting question. I have to uh, bring my memory back like uh, 40 years ago, right? Uh, when I was a kid in the middle school, uh, I think I once dreamed to be a warrior. Right, really, I dreamed to be a warrior. Not and, a solar warrior. Well, just a warrior. A warrior with, uh, yeah, with sword and arrow. Uh, that was one of my dream. I think I had that dream for, uh, for a couple of years. But of course, it's, it's, it's not real. Everybody knows that that was not real. I also knew that was not real. So then I dreamed of becoming, becoming a doctor, I think, becoming a doctor. And I was raised in Beijing, so I thought about becoming a uh, Chinese medicine doctor. And um, so I can cure people's disease with herbs and acupuncture, okay. And then I also dreamed of becoming a uh, historian because I like history, I like poem, and uh, I'm always fascinated at the history, at what happened in history. So for one time, that was my dream. I think I also dreamed of becoming a lawyer. Yeah. But then finally, uh, my, uh, my parents told me, son, I think the best, they think the best, like, best career is being an uh, engineer because uh, that's something where you can plan and control your destination. You will have a uh, risk-free or low-risk life. Okay. So I can so ask I'm you... I'm myself in physics. So can I ask you a question? Uh, so you were um, coming from the rich family or uh, what, was, what was your family background? Oh. Uh, both of my parents are university professors. Uh, university professors. So, so it's a, let's call it a, a middle class family. But of course, uh, back in 1970s, middle class in Beijing means uh, riding bicycles. Oh, okay. But it is quite uh, ecological, actually. Oh, yeah, it's uh, ecological. And uh, the... Uh, you know, Beijing in the 70s, it's a beautiful country. And you can ride bicycle to everywhere. And I still, I very much miss it in my dream. So you were dreaming about becoming a warrior. At the end, actually, you became the solar warrior. So could you tell me, could you tell us to our viewers, how did you start your adventure in the solar business? A bit uh, history also about Canadian solar. Okay. Uh, I studied physics and I studied uh, semiconductor materials in Tsinghua University in China and then I went to Canada. I got my uh, PhD in semiconductor material in, from University of Toronto. Then I landed my first job in Ontario Hydro, which is now Ontario Power Generation. But I was doing a solar project, solar for Ontario Hydro, a power company. So that showed me a uh, interesting and unique combination. Power, power generation, plus solar. I think I'm fortunate that uh, I didn't pick this career, but somehow this career picked me accidentally. That must be, I think that must be God's will. So I thank God. And I remember that um you are uh, working for Photovat indirectly because the company that you are working in um, 
in Canada uh, acquired Photobot. And right. you speak also French, uh, very good French. Mm. Yes? Uh, un peu français. <laughs> un peu français. <laughs> so, Sean, um, I think that uh, with uh, Photobot, with your company, you came to China, yes, to make some, some solar projects, yes? That's correct. And uh, this um, gave you the idea to, to open the factory in China, or how did you start the Canadian Solar Action? I think that gave me the, fact, the idea of opening a factory. But whether to do it in China or Canada, uh, that's a secondary question. So I end up um, registered a company, open up a company in Canada, but built my first factory in China. So my experience is a perfect example of how the power of West meeting East can change the world. And that's really awesome. And so I would like to ask you another question because uh, you started your company in 2001 and during these years uh, you had a lot of successes but also there were some years of, um, let's say, the, um, of the problems in the solar industry. How did you manage these moments, uh, you know, these difficult moments? Did you have also some moments that, for example, you said to yourself, Sean, I cannot stand it anymore. There is no business in solar. I have to give up. Did you have any moments like this or you were, and what, what uh, kept you fighting for, for, for your company? Never. I never had that uh, moment. And uh, I never feel desperate. I always enjoy the challenge. For me, challenge is something for you to enjoy rather than something for you to become desperate. Uh, by the way, I think, Thomas, you share the same uh, characteristic. I should ask you, right? By starting this uh, solar you know, media, it must be very challenging. Yes. You know, how do you uh, handle all these challenges? So I think you probably share the same uh, entrepreneurship as me, as, as I do. So you find- Some, someone, say that, someone said that I'm a solar maniac. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So I think for me to, if I'm to share my experience, then my experience is that you never take this, you always take this as a challenge and it's something for you to enjoy rather than something for you to feel desperate. And if, as long as you have this attitude, uh, you can probably get through 90% of the uh, difficulties. And for that 10%, even if you may feel fail, so what? You know, we're in a modern society. Usually, in most of the society, you have a social security net. It will catch you somewhere, right? And you will be able to regroup and restart. Okay, Sean, I have another question because um, you must be very busy. Yeah? I saw on your booth there are like hundreds of people. Everybody wants to speak with Laoban. <laughs> but uh, do you have also time for your private life? And if you have time for your private life, what is your hobby? What do you enjoy also besides, besides working? Oh, I have... Uh I have lots of, uh, I, I have had private time and uh, I enjoy traveling, I enjoy vacations uh, in, in a snow-covered snow country for skiing. I also enjoy the uh, tropical uh, resort and so every year I always manage to go ski once and go to a tropical island once. I enjoy reading and uh, sometimes I also enjoy just walk around and uh, to get a little bit, a moment of uh, um, like self uh, solidarity. Okay. And um, another question, I would like to ask you just uh, for a few seconds to close your eyes. And now, imagine uh, Sean Chu and Canadian Solar in 10 years. Just two seconds of uh, dream. And uh, please tell me later, how do you imagine your company in 10 years and also yourself? Okay. In 10 years, uh, I think the company uh, revenue-wise will probably be <clears throat> maybe five times bigger, maybe 10 times bigger. and. Uh, I hope, uh, and, and a company should always make profit. Uh, probably not a lot of profit, but make profit. Because, you know, any business should make profit. Uh, but we are doing solar. We have a social responsibility. 
so we can't make too much profit. And as for myself, uh, I hope I can control my white hair and the wrinkles. And so I can look uh, maybe a little bit older, but not too much older than today. Uh, exactly. You have no time to, be, to become older, yeah? Um, well, uh, that's true. So I should always keep myself busy until the last minute. So the uh, olderness will never be able to catch me. Okay, but you know, the problem is I wanted to speak uh, only private things, but um, as we are visionary, and you are one of the first um, guys in solar, strong guys in solar, who um, went into the downstream. So I would like to ask you, do you imagine also that Canadian solar will be like, you know, clean tech company with uh, Canadian solar um, electrical vehicles, with Canadian solar smart houses? Um, do you imagine your company like this, or you just would like to, you know, is it a strategical question, or you can uh, share with us as well? I don't know. On one hand, I know that you should have a dream, and the uh, sky is the limit for your dream. On the other hand, um, I also want to be focused, and uh, I'm a focused person. So it's going to be a balance of uh, dream, and uh, dream, imagination, uh, focus, and uh, reality. So we will see how this balance, you know, where this balance will lead us to. And um, another question is about the clean disruption. Because uh, you remember the solar from the beginning, actually, when it was very small, now it's uh, growing. But um, a lot of people, like, for example, Tony Siba says, say that um, solar and clean energies will disrupt other energies. So we cannot think about solar actually in a mm -hmm. rational way, yes? because if someone is disrupting, then it's growing exponentially. Do you also share this, uh, this, this opinion? I, I myself is not a disruptive person. I'm a very uh, rational. rational and instructive person. That's my behavior. However, you might have pointed out a fact that solar is destructive. And uh, solar is destructive because it's clean nature and people want a clean nature. And once you, you go over some, you know, a hurdles, you will have a, you will have a, uh, a uh, cascade effect. That will happen to solar. And also, the efficiency improvement and the cost reduction of solar can also be dramatic. So also, I don't want to disrupt other people's life, but the matter of fact is that solar is probably a disruptive, disruptive energy source, but that's a destructive for good. Yes, exactly. So we uh, arrive to the future. So my last question, because normally it's me who is wishing so something to someone, to my, to, to my speakers, but I would like to ask you, what uh, would you ask me to wish you for the future? Oh, uh, why don't you uh, tell me your wish? No, because, you know, uh, as I said at the beginning, this is like a, a private uh, and a bit okay. different interview. So I would like you, because, you know, in this case, we can also discover oh. what are your dreams, yes? Okay. Uh, I like to make friends. I like to see all my friends uh, grow and uh, have prosperity. So I would like you to wish Canadian company to have a sustainable growth uh, in the foreseeable future, five years, 10 years, 15 years, and to be able to host this interview and to be able to talk to talk with you every year and uh, three, four times every year. Yes, and maybe also to enjoy some private time, yeah? That's correct. That's correct. So, okay, but I wish you also something else uh, besides uh, the fact uh, that you said about the business. So I wish you also that you have time for enjoying the life 
and also for visiting other countries. And uh, that your family is growing in the clean, better world. Also yeah. thanks to the guys, the Solar Pioneers Thank you, yeah. Thank you so much, uh, Sean. Okay. It was a pleasure speaking to you and uh, we will follow you during the next session as well. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. This was Solar PV TV in our first um, interview with Solar Pioneers. A bit unusual interview, more on the private side, just to show that we in the solar world are not only about business, but we are also nice, humble and uh, visionary people. Thank you so much.